Hey everyone, it's April 15th, that makes it tax day. This is Roger Williams Media, and today I wanted to talk with you about Google AdWords. So if you're a business owner and you currently want to advertise or market and make money, obviously the big thing to make sure you have is a website and that you're online and you're showing up on Google. Well, there's a few different ways to show up on Google. It's not always clear to everybody what's what. The big one that everybody always wants to show up for is the organic listings. This is called search engine optimization or SEO. And there's a lot of people trying to sell these services and it's a very, very difficult and competitive business. Basically, you have to create a lot of good content and then hopefully you're in the good graces of Google and they put you on the first page for someone typing in that search. Now, the other way you show up on Google is by advertising and Google's advertising program is called AdWords. Now, an advertisement on Google shows up in one of two places. When you do a search, there's three spots above the organics that sometimes show up, they don't always though, and it depends on how much traffic that search gets. But there's three spots above, and then on the side, there's four through 10 spots on the side. Sometimes all of them are on the side, but usually they're split up between the two. Now, in order to show up for one of those places, you have to go into Google, create an AdWords account. You have to create a campaign and then an ad group. And inside of the ad group, you have to put what keyword you want your advertisement to show up for. There's three different ways of showing up for keywords. There's broad, there's phrase, and there's exact match. Now, when you put in broad, which is the default setting, you could put in wedding cakes and your ad would then show up for anything that is related to wedding and cakes that come together in some sort of a search combination. In other words, you're gonna show up for a lot of searches. You need to be ready for that. Now it's the default setting in Google, and so that's where usually when you hear someone having a bad experience doing AdWords, it's because all of their keywords were broad match keywords. So they were showing up for a lot of searches that didn't necessarily apply to them, Therefore, they spent a lot of money getting a lot of people to their website, but those people weren't necessarily looking for whatever that person was offering. So the next one is phrase match. This is usually got, or this does have uh, uh, quotation marks around it. And what this means is that wedding cakes has to show up in that order inside of a search string. So I'm looking for wedding cakes for my wedding. Uh, is there a wedding cakes bakery in Phoenix, so on and so forth. So you've got a little bit of wiggle room happening there, um, but you're defining the intent a little bit better. The final one is exact match. This has the square braces around it, and it means that it has to be exactly that. So someone has to search for wedding cakes for your ad to show up. Now, you have some additional settings. The big one is geography. You can choose where you want your ad to be showing up whether it's the United States, whether it's a specific state, whether it's a city, um, on down. I believe you can do zip codes. Don't hold me to that. You can with Facebook though, but that'll be another video. Now, once you've got that going, now you need to create an ad that speaks not only to what that searcher is keying in, so it should have their keywords in it, but it also needs to convey what you have to offer them or a call to action. Why do they need to click on your ad? Uh, this will, having a good call to action not only ensures that people will click on the ad, but it more ensures that the people who do click on your ad know why they're clicking on it and have an intent when they get to your website. The final piece of the puzzle, of course, is your website. Once they land on your landing page, does that landing page speak to what they were searching for? If it does, there's a much better possibility that they're going to go ahead and either call you or fill out a form or buy your product or do whatever you're asking them to do on your website. Uh, there's a lot of different components to all of this. It's changing drastically with what's now called enhanced campaigns. If you're new to AdWords, don't worry about it. It's just how it's going to be. If you've been doing AdWords for a while and you haven't heard about enhanced campaigns, you need to get online. I'd recommend Search Engine Land Journal. Brad Geddes is an awesome, awesome guy. He's got a great book called Advanced AdWords. He does a podcast. His website is certifiedknowledge.com com, net, or org, maybe all three. Uh, if you are going to operate your own AdWords, 
you really need to check him out. You also need to look at doing your AdWords certification, which is a free exam that Google will let you take so you can become certified. Basically, they just have you learn their manual so you understand how AdWords works. Now, if you're like most business people and you don't have time to do anything except run your business, you need to hire somebody to do your AdWords. You've got a couple of options. You can bring someone in-house or you can hire an agency slash consultant, somebody external. Um, personally, I mean, I do AdWords campaigns. Um, I usually only will do larger budget campaigns, uh, medium-sized budget campaigns, really small budgets, meaning if you're only planning on spending $500 a month or less, um, I, I just, there's, I, I have enough going on already um, to manage something like that. Usually I'm starting at about $1,000 a month and on up. I have clients spending tens of thousands of dollars a month um, and have very successful programs for them, having a three plus return on investment going on. Um, and so that's really the important part is whether you're gonna hire in-house or go with an agency consultant, out of house person, make sure that at the end of the day, you're measuring what matters most, which is return on investment. Uh, how much money you're putting into AdWords, you need to see something coming back with that. And so that requires conversion tracking. Um, you know, you need to be tracking the email forms that are going through, uh, phone calls when they're mobile clicking on the phone, tracking those calls. Um, and then once they're calling into your offices, are you asking, how did you hear about us? Oh, Google, what keywords did you search for? And make sure you're collecting all this data and compiling it together and either doing you know weekly or monthly reports and reviews with everybody that's involved with this to make sure that the money you're spending is making you money back uh you know measure 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 make sure that all this stuff is working for you if you have questions for it my email's right there comments are down below i skipped over a whole bunch of stuff adwords is a huge megalithic beast and uh, you know, there's more than I could go over in a, in a five to 10 minute video. Um, I'll do more episodes in the future. Let me know if you thought this was interesting. If you want to know more, I'm happy to talk about this stuff. I do it all day long, every single day, including Saturday and Sunday. I'm always checking the accounts, um, for the clients that I measure and maintain. And, uh, you know, it's just a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of fun things that you can do. You, you know, learn new things all the time, but, um, there's a lot to it. You can spend a lot of money very quickly with no results. So just be careful with it. That's all I got. It's Monday. It's tax day. You paid your taxes. Good job. Let's go do another week. It's Tuesday. Tomorrow, rock and roll.